welcome to the world of wings, worms, and wonder. I'm Kelly Johnson, your creative nature connection guide. This is the glazing technique video from my watercolor basics for nature journaling video series. Glazing is a fun technique that allows translucent layers of paint colors to glow through each other, giving a very rich and sometimes luminous, depending on your color choices, look to your painting or part of your painting. It's great for skies and flowers, for water if you're doing the ocean or a river, for larger areas of foliage like trees in the distance or um, leaves that you really wanted to stand out. It is not a fast technique, but it's a great effect. So, to glaze, you need to use first the translucent colors of paint. And we'll talk more about that in the variable section in a minute. But right now, just looking at technique. So I have here sap green, indigo, phthalo indigo, uh, crimson, and then I have over here an Indian yellow, and I have um, an ultramarine blue here. So sap green is a great color to practice glazing with right off the bat because it is inherently not opaque. So we're gonna lay down a wash of paint. A wash is a layer of thin paint, so you're using more water. So we're just, and, and this is kind of a wet on wet technique. Um, I'm not adding water first, but I'm just gonna put a wash, thin layer, of green paint here. Sap green paint, we'll say. And see how wet this is on my palette? It's like a puddle. I got a new palette. Um, I used a fresh palette, I'll say, for this, not my normal palette, because glazing sort of requires its own palette of watery, wateriness. So, a nice even layer. I'm not painting anything particular. I'm just showing technique for this. You'll play, you can play around with your actual imagery. Okay, layer one. Now you gotta let it dry. Now you can speed up the glazing technique by using a hair dryer on your painting and that's totally fine. So we're gonna pause a minute. I'm gonna blow dry this and we'll be right back. Okay, all dry. Uh, blow drying does make your paper a little bit extra curly but that's all right because it speeds up this process. Now I'm gonna go in with a little blue here fun and just slightly okay and then go go over you play around with how saturated you want your wash to be this is pretty pale I don't want it to go too blue so and you can even do a fade yes yeah, see I have more blue at the bottom okay now blow dry. Okay, layer two is dry. See how the green is glowing through? See how pretty that is? You can just imagine how beautiful this would be for creating like a like Caribbean water color. Water color. In care the color of Caribbean water in watercolor. I'm gonna add more green. You wouldn't have to layer green here but I want to. Another wash. See how it's really building up and looking rich and thick? And blow dry again. Okay, now I'm gonna do one more layer of the blue. You don't have to alternate colors like this. This is just what I'm choosing to do here. Keeping it a little more blue at the bottom less lighter more water in my wash at the top so we have a nice fade see how pretty this is looking on the edges too I love that abstract edge look this could be make a really pretty background if you were just making a card for someone and you could leave the edges and then you could do your lettering uh, but lettering is a different video um, okay blow dry again. Okay, now we're going to just show how colors can glow through. We see how the blue and green work together in this analogous color scheme. Well, what happens if we throw in a complementary color? So the pink is complementing the green. 
We do not want to go too dark too fast. So you see I'm doing using a whoop, using a lot of water here. And I'm just gonna go like plaid over the top. Okay, I can go a little darker. Didn't show up much. Maybe a little darker. Don't want it to get muddy. See up there. You can dab that. If we get too much water. Okay, now let's also try it with the purple. And I'm gonna let the purple and the pink touch. We'll get a little fading and blending in there between those two. And I'm using colors out of the tube here to glaze with, but you can definitely mix your own colors as well to glaze with. Now, blow dry again. Okay, this is very soft and very subtle. Let's see what happens if we go much bolder with the pink over here. Let's see what happens if we go bolder with the purple. See how this would make a great plaid? Now let's let this blow dry again. Okay, so you can see the beautiful soft subtle fades here. You can see the more bold blends and fades and see how the color changes in the way the green is like luminescently glowing through here and here the pink, the pink wash is sort of more luminescent over top of the green. So you can play with that. You can do glazes with all greens or all blues or that doesn't have to be compliments like this. This is just one idea. So let's see, or one example, let's see what happens when we add the yellow. Now this yellow is more of a semi translucent, which means it has a little bit of white in it. So we can just go across. You know, let's try a bolder stroke. Pretty, right? I mean, you could make plaid. You can see how gorgeous this would be for like a morning sunrise with the very soft colors. If you did blues and grays, that early morning light um, before the sun comes up and gets bright. Uh, it's really, just notice as the layers build up how the colors look very dynamic and rich. Um, now as you keep adding layers and letting them dry in between, this is called dry glazing, this technique that we've done right here. There is wet glazing, but it's basically so similar to wet on wet that I don't really use wet glazing um, because I just do wet on wet. But you, but it will be a little less, uh, like you couldn't get this kind of effect with a wet glazing. Oh, look at that detail coming in there. That's amazing. Um, so pretty. So experiment with layering different colors, different color schemes, monochromatic color schemes, complementary color schemes. And you can see how glazing will do great with complementary color schemes because it's dry in between. Uh, they won't they won't blend. Like a wet glazing would not look good with complementary colors unless you wanted it to look brown. So variables. How dry are your layers? Are you getting that dry glowing effect or are things a little damp blending together? Use the blow dryer, ceiling fan, do what you need to do to get your layers dry, dry, dry for dry glazing. Are your paint choices opaque or transparent or semi-transparent by nature? So a few, for example, a few inherently transparent colors are the sap green, the rose, and the violet. Some inherently opaque colors would be Naples yellow, cerulean blue, anything reds, yellows, oranges in the cadmium family, olive green. These colors have some white in them. Um, so I would say learning what colors are transparent and opaque through experience and maybe a little research is probably your greatest variable as a beginner. Um, it'll need the most experimentation to learn if the colors glaze well together, but I think it'll be really fun to play around with, and I think you'll find that gl dry glazing is a really wonderful technique with just tons of potential to give your paintings this very luminous and 
dare I say, more advanced look as a painter. It's sort of like, you know, you've been painting a little while. You know, you're moving out of that beginner phase. Let's get it into like step two, step three type techniques, and that would be this glazing. So, have fun with it. Practice glazing. Use it in different applications. And I look forward to seeing some of your projects. Be sure if you post them on Instagram to hashtag them Wings, Worms, and Wonder so I can see them. And I'd love to comment. So thank you for joining me in the Wings, Worms, and Wonder Watercolor Basics for Nature Journaling series. Subscribe below so you don't miss any of the videos in this series. Find more nature journaling painting tutorials in my Nature Journal Tools series and in my Nature Journaling in a Canoe video below as well as lots more um, videos on nature connection and slideshows of student work. Get deeper instruction in my Connecting with Color, Color Theory for Nature Journaling eCourse. So if you, these terms of analogous, complementary, these things are foreign to you, that might be a really useful, fun mini course to learn color theory as related to nature journaling. Or go a little deeper in my month-long Draw Yourself Back to Nature eCourse, Art Journaling for Everyone where you can really concentrate on learning different techniques and bringing creativity and nature into your everyday life. I have lots more creative nature connection ideas, tips, tricks, and activities on my blog, Wings, Worms, and Wonder. Check it out in the link below. And while you're there, subscribe to my newsletter to have all these activities delivered right to your inbox and get a free copy of my ebook when you subscribe through my website. Thanks for coming. Thanks for connecting to nature creatively, and I'll see you soon. Bye!